so purposes of being, this being a Zoom meeting and for open meeting laws, um, the, have the Historical Commission meeting, and I will do attendance. Denise Barstow Mans. Present. Courtney Meyer. Present. Sharon Parsons. Present. Judy Stone. Here. Diana West is here as well. And hopefully Adriana Sosinski will join us later. Our first order of business is to, oh, excuse me. We also have a guest, uh, Alex Lamarche. Did I say that right? Yep, you said it right. Awesome, from Hadley Media is with us as well. So first order of business is to approve the minutes from July 26th. Do I have a motion? That moved. Can I have a second? Second. Were there any corrections or additions that needed to be made? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I think I have to do a roll call vote. Denise? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Judy? Aye. And I also will pass it, Diana West. That passes them unanimously. Okay, first up is the Russell School Committee. Uh, I believe Courtney had some things to share um, about her time with the committee and specifically had some things she wanted to highlight for this meeting. So I give the floor over to Courtney. Okay, great, let me pull up my notes. Um, okay, so we have just about finalized a survey to go out to the community um, with five major um, options to move forward with the school, um, including rent, leasing, selling, rehabbing for town use, um, and demolition. And um, in the survey, we're expressing that, of course, we would like to save the building. Um, and we are, um, probably going to get it out in the next few weeks. Um, it's also going to be inserted into the water bill for November 1st. Um, and we'll be putting um, bulletins all over town for people to fill out. And then we'll also have hard copies available. Um, so that's just a quick update on that. Um, we'll eventually have a forum probably in the spring once we get the results back from the, um, from the survey. Um, and then let me take a look at the notes. Um, in terms of stabilization, uh, we were talking about options for the roof. Um, and folks were saying that a metal roof makes the most sense. Um, but they weren't sure if we as a historical commission would um, oppose such a change as a, uh, in, instead of having like a slate roof. So I want to get folks' thoughts on that. My knee-jerk reaction is no. But um, if it becomes the difference between actually saving the building and it being demolished because I said no to a metal roof, then I could be persuaded otherwise. Okay. Um, I think slate roofs are really beautiful. Uh, I think they do have longevity if they're taken care of right. Uh, but we have seen in the past that that has not happened. So it's not really showing a great track record for the future. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, like, I want to say no, but I also understand the <laughs> parameters of this situation. So I could isn't, say yes. Isn't this roof supposed to just protect with the building for the time being anyway? It's not meant to be part of a renovation. Could you, could you say that again? Isn't this metal roof that they're planning to try to put on, isn't the roof they're trying oh. to put on just to protect the building anyway, not necessarily part of a renovation process? Um, I think it depends. I mean, it, uh, it needs to be stabilized ASAP. Um, and so ideally, if we were to stabilize it, it would be great to put something on that we wouldn't have to replace again with something else. I feel like when we talked about um, the $8,000 from CPA funds going to the roof 
repairs. We yeah. agreed that because we had already for the Goodwin building and the town hall um, approved metal roofs that we would be cool with this. And I don't have the minutes to back that up, but I feel like we already did perhaps vote on this, that we would be okay with it being metal roof. But I support it being a metal roof if it's the difference between that and demolition. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I mean, so I'll, do, I'll keep folks in the loop on that. I don't know if we have to like, no, I don't think we're at the point of voting on anything. Mm -hmm. um, is there another question? You, I had in my notes, Courtney, from you, stabilization, historic preservation. Was that all part of the roof? Yeah, I don't think we're at that point yet. Okay. Um, but yes, thank you. <laughs> I think initially I, I wanted to talk about it, but um, I think once we get the survey out and then figure out what folks want to do with it, then, um, mm -hmm. then we can talk more about that. Okay. Denise, off the top of your head, do you know like what is currently in the CPA fund that that is monies that could have potentially be gone after for a project such as Russell School? Okay, yes, I can find that actual information. Um, but I think it's like two million dollars. Okay. Yeah, um, which I realize is not even close to what the Russell School would need. So it's $2 million, right? <laughs> it's a possible $2 million. I mean, obviously some of that is for other projects. So you won't say that yeah. whole amount. But we we have that. as a committee, the past um, two meetings, we really discussed bonding, which I didn't really understand what that was, but basically it's borrowing money based on the money that we already have. So we'll be able to expand our impact um, at like a pretty low interest rate. So we would be borrowing money um but it looks like something that we're going to bring to the town at the upcoming special town meeting for the phase two of the the field projects at hopkins so if you know if it works on that project then i think that there is hope for other possibilities of bonding All right, uh, Courtney, did you have anything else about Russell School? Uh, no, I'll just keep folks uh, in the loop. Okay, great. So Denise and I met with Alex from Hadley Media a couple weeks ago about the Russell School documentary that the former people of Hadley Media had started on our behalf. And we shared some information that we were hoping just make a short under 10 minute video capturing the history of Russell School that would include oral history interviews. Uh, we shared what we had with Alex and Alex shared the videos that he had with us. I have not had time to go through them yet, uh, but we're hoping to uh, get that project rolling again. Alex, did you have anything you wanted to share? Yeah, so um, as you guys may know, we have been busy um, for the past few weeks. Um, I still don't have an assistant right now, so I've been pretty much the person kind of doing everything um, right now. Uh, so I haven't been able to really, really dive deep into this project. Um, however, if you guys have any ideas and you, you've seen the videos, Denise, actually Denise, did you ever get a chance to see the, the uh, videos or did that not work for you still? Yeah, I wasn't able to do it the first time and then I saw that you followed up with me and I don't know, did you change the format at all? No, I um, usually takes Google a bit to process the videos in Google Drive. Okay, so maybe I just was too hasty, and I'll, I'll check back in on that. Okay, yeah, check it back on that. If it doesn't work for you, let me know, and I'll um, take a day to get them all uh, converted to, you said MP4, right? Yeah, I mean, I tried to open it on my, a couple different things. Um but yeah, MP4 would work really well, I think. Okay, for... I'm also wondering if it's because it was in that Dropbox too, and I don't know. I'll, I'll look into it for you. If it doesn't work for me, just let me know. Okay. Uh, but back to what I was saying, um, you guys have, if you want to, if, 
If anyone on the committee who wants who wants to see the uh, videos as well, um, just let me know. I'm going to post my. I believe I can. I cannot comment on here. Um, so if you have my, I'm pretty sure it's most of you have my emails. Just email me, and I'll send the Google folder over to you. Um, I probably won't be able to really get deep into this until the new year, new calendar year. This is as long as I could find someone um, to at, find a production assistant for the department. Otherwise, I'm just going to be drowning in stuff. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, if I, if I do have time here and there, I'll definitely take a look and uh, see what I can do here and there. But there's not much I can really do until the new calendar year when I have someone in, trained up, and all ready to go. So, okay, I we totally understand, and we appreciate any time you can give us. And mm -hmm. I mean, we have a couple projects going right now, and mm -hmm. obviously, we'd like to get this back rolling, but we understand your scheduling constraints. So, we just want to be able to work with you, work within your schedule and our schedules to hopefully get something moving forward. Yeah, totally. I want to get something moving forward too. Um, so um, if I get, if I think of something or if I talk to someone, I know I'd send an email that I'm due to talk to the uh, high school principal. And so hopefully maybe as you guys uh, have mentioned, or we've mentioned that I could probably t potentially um, talk with the music director at some point if I'm able to. So yeah, um, so once I get a chance to talk to the uh, principal, I'll talk about this project and uh, we'll see what we get, can get from there. I don't know also if, um, I think it's still April Camuso who's the principal, but if she'd have an idea to find you some, a possible assistant in a high school or, or if that was something that somebody was looking for for community service to help no, you. No, so the assistant needs to stay past um, potentially 10 o'clock. And oh. that is against the law for someone under 18 to work past 10 o'clock. I believe it's 10 o'clock. Um, plus, I don't want to interfere with their busy, busy high school schedules and stuff. So, All right. Well, good luck with your assistant hunt. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to be fun. <laughs> okay. I think we're ready to move on to old business. Uh, the yeah, historical a, marker. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That made me think of a question for Courtney for that for the Russell School survey. Are you gonna put an end date? The survey must be completed or submitted by, sweet. Yeah, so we have it up on SurveyMonkey right now. Um, and our goal is to get it done by the end of the calendar year. Um, right now I have December 5th written down. Um, we have our next meeting on Thursday, so we'll finalize that then. Nice. Um, I think but SurveyMonkey is, you know, month to month. And so our um, subscription will be done on the 5th. So I figured I'd just end it then word cool but make sure you can still get the data afterward yes <laughs> oh god could you imagine <laughs> <laughs> all right so historical markers sign project courtney sent around the final proofs for approval that was on my to-do list today to look at them and or didn't um <laughs> did anybody else have anything to add about that I think they look really good. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, good work, Courtney, for moving that forward. Oh, thanks. Um, I, so in order to approve these officially, I know, Diana, you haven't read through them again. Um, do we need to vote on it? Or is this something we can just do via email? Um, I think we will eventually need an official vote, um, especially, especially once we go searching for funding for these signs. Mm -hmm. um, so I think email is okay for now, but perhaps um, just to be official and above board at the next yeah. meeting, we do have an official vote for that. Um, I was hoping Adriana could be here so we could talk about the Spanish um, oh, yeah. translation mm -hmm. uh, because like I mentioned, I know it costs more money, but it seems silly to me to have a sign where you can see both sides and only have information on one side of the sign. And I doubt 
anywhere down the road, we would take them down and put something else on the other side. So I think this is kind of our, okay. our one shot to make sure both sides are completed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other thing is we could always have one that's not vertical. We could have one that's sort of slanted. Mm -hmm. um, if we choose not to do the Spanish, I, I, I think my concern is how long is it going to take to um, translate it and then design it and then get it printed. But we also don't have funding for it yet. So I don't know, but would we be applying for funding for April? And I don't even know if CPA would do it. Cause I know when you talked about maybe CPA wouldn't do it because it's a new item. It's not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how to get it through CPA. I've had multiple people through CPA tell me that it would not qualify. Yeah. Um, the town administrator still seems under the impression that we can get CPA money, but she's not in charge of CPA. So, and she doesn't know all the ins and outs of it. And I learned more recently that there's a lot of ins and outs that I didn't realize before. Um, I think we need to try to come up with some kind of sponsor sponsorship proposal and bring that around to yeah. various businesses, um, but perhaps start, it was recommended to me to approach local banks such as East Hampton Savings Bank and Florence Bank. Yeah, I think maybe start there they maybe have some deeper pockets than other people do. Um, I'm also thinking like, should we get a bunch of sponsors then we feel obligated to have to like find space on these signs for right. where to put them, which could be a bit of a problem since we are already really taking up all of our real estate on the signs. Right. Um, so I guess I will take on looking into how one writes a sponsorship proposal and sorry, my cat just bit my hand. And um, where to go from there. Uh, and it was Mary Thayer who originally suggested to me that I go to the bank. So maybe I'll reach out to her and yeah. see if she has any suggestions. Okay. Um, do we have a more up-to-date quote so I know how much I am asking for? Um, also, when we had brought this publicly to a couple different people, they had expressed to us that we should also get quotes from more local companies. And I think we should do that just in good faith to um, at least, because it's typically with a project with really any kind of project like this, you would get like three bids to understand like the range of what you were working with. Yeah. And then make a decision. Um, do we know who would do such a thing locally? Someone gave me a name once upon a time. Um, I'll do a little bit of research about that too. Okay. So I don't know if like sun rays would do signs like we're thinking. Um, probably if I talked to some places on like various museum organizations, they might have an idea of who to reach out to. Mm -hmm. um, I brought up a while ago that I noticed in the town of Shrewsbury, they have all these lovely new signs up and I reached out to them to find out more information and they never got back to me. I could try again. I mean, again, that wouldn't be super local, um, but they might have an idea. Okay. Okay, so our homework for this week is that we all read the final proofs of Courtney's signs and say, yes, these are amazing. <laughs> Do that by Friday. Okay, so driving podcast audio tour. So I believe we're in the final stages. There's just a couple more tweaks to make, correct, Courtney? Yeah, exactly. Um yeah, Sherry, I wanted to double check with you. Um, I had tagged you in something about the, the mills, um, which you responded to, and I wasn't sure. I just wanted to make sure that the edits that Denise put in on behalf of Margaret um, were visible when you were looking at them. Sorry. 
<laughs> you having a little? <laughs> I was <laughs> having a sneezing attack. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I did read that the information. Okay, perfect. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because sometimes um, in Google Docs you can only see like the final version. So I just want to make sure that those were great. Okay. Um, yeah. So then Denise, I think there are just a, maybe like two or three other things. There was one I wanted um, Margaret to reread because the timing didn't seem to work out correctly. Uh, the dates, um, and I think there were a couple other things in there. Yes, I, I reached out to her about the timing thing. Uh, she did not respond, obviously, or else I would have changed it. Um, what were the other things? I can look them up. I feel like we resolved yeah. the OBGYN thing and the... I'll look. I will look. Okay. Yep. Um, and then the other thing was, I wasn't sure. So I wrote... Um, like a one sentence thing of like, you can go to this website to see, you know, pictures of the places we're talking about. Um, but I don't know if we want to do that or not. So I was trying to think of um, where we would have something, like where would we store those pictures? Cause obviously we could, I don't think there's a way to store them on our little town website page. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know if that was something as simple as a Google Drive or um, if the possibility existed to have a free Flickr account. It's unclear to me if Flickr, if you can just have a free Flickr account or if you have to pay. Um, yeah. And if we do that, do we really need to have it said in the audio tour or do we just include it in the description of the tour? And then that way we can proceed and then just add photos as needed. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be super specific about it. I would maybe just something general in the beginning, like um, to view historic photos, check out a simple URL or something. Um, we definitely shouldn't make promises that we have a photo of something. We also right. have to make sure that we have permission to post any of these photos. Yep. Okay, great. And probably like wherever the, the tour lives, like wherever you're accessing it from, then that could be something, a link could just be there to click on as well. Yep, okay. Great. Um, okay, so, all right, one second. Flickr has a free plan. It's limited to 1,000 photos. We will not have 1,000 photos. <laughs> okay. So that's a possibility. And we can organize that, like, in albums and stuff. So if we want to, we can say, like, oh, I've had the Hakanam Center of Town, Washington, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Um, and then, Diana, you were going to reach out to Stacy at some point. I'm not sure. Yes, if that's on my to do list. Um, find out when she can get started and if she has a hosting site she recommends. Highlighting my homework. Okay, anything else? Anybody has anything to say about the driving podcast slash audio tour? Okay, so the next thing I think Courtney already told me about the walking tour is that we don't have anything new to say about that. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to keep it on the agenda so we wouldn't forget about it and it wouldn't fall off our radars. Yep. Okay, the metal detector ordinance. <laughs> So I finally talked to Carolyn and Carolyn told me that they are forming a bylaws subcommittee and the bylaws subcommittee is going to review every bylaw that exists in Hadley. So I wish them Godspeed on that journey. Wow. And um, so basically she told me that they would review what we had written, but most likely nothing would happen with it until the spring town meeting. 
And so I said, okay, just a reminder that this was something the select board had approached us to do and <laughs> we did our part. <laughs> so if you want to keep dragging it on that, that's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we, we are here to help So uh, She said, cause I, when I had written up the form about enforcing it, I had added in the thing about a fine because I mean, if there's nothing to back up this bylaw, people are just going to keep doing it. Like what, you're just going to get a slap on the wrist, right? So she's like, oh, we just have to figure out how we would collect the fine and where the money goes and all that stuff. So I'm totally fine with a subcommittee that's not me figuring out that aspect of it because I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. Um, but I mean, I have gotten a couple reports of people still using metal detectors on the common. <laughs> so it's definitely a concern and I hope that it, we will eventually see this come to fruition. So that's all I have to show about that. Um, so CPA applications, we had, as we know, for the purpose of the minute, submitted a letter in support of CPA funding for Alex Villadu's tobacco barn restoration. I've been informed that he has since retracted his application because there were um, many hoops he had to jump through to get the CPA funding for his privately owned barn. Um, I think that's too bad, but I, I understand his perspective about that. Um, Mary Thayer sent me like everything he would have to do. And she's like, Alex didn't know about any of this. And it's like, I didn't know any about any of this either. <laughs> so um, I guess I, I mean, there's just so much more to CPA than I ever realized before. So definitely a learning curve there. Denise, did you want to add anything about the recent meetings you have attended in regards to CPA? Yeah, um, that's a good point. I mean, I didn't know that there was all those things to do either. It's like you could take a whole master class on CPA laws. And then at the same time, if a CPA approves it in one town, then it's it's legal in that town. So it's just like, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot to know. Um, but yeah, he withdrew his application. I think that he would have faced a lot of opposition at town meeting. So um, mm. yeah. Um, the other things that we did the two things that we did pass through last night at our CPA meeting was uh, an additional $25,000 for the Hockenham Cemetery, which is going to bring it, the whole project up to like uh, $120,000. Um, That's for the fence, right? For the fence and for reinforcing the turf so that people can park on it and for something else. Oh, the memorial pillar at the other end made with the stones that were from the original fence. And also we approved um, the phase two of the F Hawkins Academy field project minus a concrete slab that they were gonna just kind of put in and either use for bathrooms or for um, concession stand. They didn't really know which one it was going to be. And we we're like, well, you we should probably know what that is going to be. So it's the entire project minus that concrete slab. Yep. So just not for the purpose of the minutes. And maybe Denise, you don't have an answer to this question. But is there a way like, do I have to lobby at the state level to like try to get around some of this red tape? Because I, I feel like, you know, we have all this money and we're just, we're not using it to the best of the ability it could be used for because people are afraid of all of these rules. Well, I mean, I think for, I think there should be rules. Like the rules that he's looking at is that the, you know, the Massachusetts Historical Commission um, mandates that you work with a certain, you know, licensed registered person that knows what they're doing. And, and that's the kind of stuff. And I think that if the town, if the taxpayers are going to pay money for these projects, especially in this case where it's going to be a project that is, it's privately owned property. 
Um, but there should be some, not barriers, but it should be taken really seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think that the things that he would have to go through are hard, but they're not impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just trying to learn more and understand. So when people come to us in the future, I can provide better information and not lead people astray or give them false hope. Yeah. And like I see that email that says all the different things that they have to do because it is good to know if we're going to write a letter of recommendation that, um, that we know the whole process as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else people have to say about CPA? Okay. So the last thing I had was the historical asset census. So as we know, Andy Morris Friedman had approached us with this idea to collect information about historical objects related to Hadley in both private and public hands. And I had expressed our, um, our concerns that this would open sort of a rabbit hole and people would be sharing information that they wouldn't want made publicly known to Andy. And so then it, it sounds like Andy did not go forward with the project. And that was the last thing I heard from him. He said, it sounds like the historical commission wouldn't support this. And I said, I think we would support it with some more parameters in place and to make sure that um, it would not be publicly made known where these objects were, unless that was something that um, private owners were okay with. So as far as I know, the project is on hold, possibly um, completely dead in the water. I haven't heard anything more from him since the end of July. Okay, anything else we want to talk about? It's only 7.35. Is that our deadline? <laughs> I would love to invite everyone to Hawk and Um Day, which is happening this Sunday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m in the Hockenham Rural Historic District. Um, Barso's on View Farm is giving free farm tours to the public, public from 11 or at 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Um, the schoolhouse, which is not usually open, is gonna be open from noon to three. And Mary Fair, our Hockenham Village historian, is going to be giving a presentation at noon at two o'clock. So worth checking out. I did not know about the, um, I don't know what the the day before the October first the history day that looks cool yes. is that yeah. history day? um so I had a little bit of prior knowledge for that just because of my connection to the farm museum and um, it's too bad that he didn't reach out to Hakanam um, but from what I understand is that Mary Thayer was part of that string of information of the guy trying to organize the day so it's just too bad that that wasn't better communicated. So apparently this guy has a, a track record of organizing these types of days in other places. So last year he did one that was like Western Hampshire County, like out more in the hill towns where they had a bunch of things opened. And so he wanted to do one in Eastern Hampshire County. And so was approaching like every little thing like the farm museum and historical societies around to be open. Um, mm -hmm. And perhaps he just didn't know that he needed to reach out to you guys. I'm not, Sure. Yeah, this is something that like, like I just wanted to do a few years ago, so I did it, and it's yeah. I just didn't realize. I know that Mary has um a prior engagement on the first, so that's probably why she yeah, because I need her to be my speaker. She rocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was just very like. I think the guy only organized it like a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay, cool. and this is just like a passion project of his and well, I feel you know, that the other organizations to sign on. Nice. But um, if you like have flyers or anything, then we might be able to like hand them out at the farm museum. If you get them. Oh, you have flyers. Yeah. I'll drop, I'll drop a couple by. Yeah. Thanks. That's Sounds like fun. We were planning on going. Um, COVID has hit our household. Um, so oh, no. <laughs> we're, we're recovering. Um, I think our, you know, my, my two-year-old got sick first. 
and then my six-year-old is starting to cough. So I don't think we'll be able to come <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe next bad. year. <laughs> Denise, I'm guessing in my current state, it's probably not super <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it's a fair, a fair assumption. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I'll be hanging out at the uh, schoolhouse with Mary. So yay, yay! Been, I emailed her about that. Probably twenty years before since I've been in that schoolhouse. So yeah, probably went there on a field trip in school, and that was the last time I was in there. Yeah. <laughs> What's in there now? Is there any like furniture or anything? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They've got some old desks set up in there, and the chalkboard still there. And- it's kind of cool, actually. Awesome. Well, Denise, best of luck with that whole endeavor. I hope you get a lot of people. Thanks. Yeah, me too. Fun day. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about? I'm good. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for your time. We have a little bit of homework to work on. And um, otherwise, I'll see you via email. And our next meeting, which will be in November, we might need to look at the calendar because I think we be near Thanksgiving. Thanks. It's right around Thanksgiving. Do we want to try to push it the week before or the week after? I would rather go the week before, the week after we're starting into Advent and yeah. Crazy. All it, right. It so, looks like it's scheduled for the 15th. Yeah, um, I was going to say we've got five my Tuesdays that month. So that's cool. Oh, okay. All that's right. 15. Perfect. Yeah. And Thanksgiving's on the 24th. So, okay. I know we try to save the third Tuesday, but then life gets in the way. So it changes. All right. But perfect. Next meeting, Tuesday, November 15th. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope you have a lovely evening.